Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martinbeck and I get to interview the most interesting people. Some I've known a long, long time and our today's guest is one of those who, well, this was the school yearbook and this is Jim and over here is Bernie. Uh -huh. I'm the younger woman. Um, by one year? Yeah, I think so. Jim Nations, welcome on board. Thank you. Better Life TV. This was the first year the school first existed. One, yes. This is up in Douglas County, 1956. Yeah. So where were you living in those days? And in Tiller, just a few miles up the river. Tiller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and what was it like? I mean, how many were in your family at that time? Oh. There were uh, four boys at home at that time. The reason that question is, is really relevant is because at any one time, there might be a dozen. Oh, yes. How that, does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm the 12th, I believe. Uh, in, yeah, I'm the 12th one born to the family. And, uh, and so, you know, I didn't even meet uh, two or three of my Two brothers and one sister I didn't need, and I never saw them. They died before I was born. Uh, different things, but um, and you're not the end of the line no, either. You're no, not the caboose. There, there are three more after me. <laughs> All these nation boys, four little uh -huh. boys, and we became a quartet, the quartet of the family. Uh huh. A lot of fun. Because what's the music origin? Your mother just loved music? Oh, she did. Uh, my mother and dad both. Mm. My dad uh, promised to, to give us $100 a piece if we would record a song and send it to my mother's father to show off us boys. Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. I remember the, the song. Oh, how, how neat. How old were you then? Uh, I was the oldest one in the family, of course, at that time, and uh, I think I was 10 or 11, something like that. And so you're... And so they were all down from that. Well, this is, this family, um, obviously, I met in 56, but their older brother, Olin, I had known since I was in first grade. Oh. And uh, it's, and your mother, I got to interview her here and sh three of the, four of the girls were with her. Um, just, just so happy. In fact, I have a picture of your brother here on some place. And uh, tell me about Bob. Now there's Bob. Yeah, Bob's been a sick fella. Yeah, he was very, very sick. Nearly died several times. Uh, went in for a rather simple surgery, but it didn't end up that way. Yeah, nearly lost him. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay, Olin and Stanley. Then there's the girls, right? Uh -huh. They come next. Uh, Ruth, you Edie, uh, Eula, mm -hmm. Millie, Martha, uh, Alice Louise. <laughs> now, have you ever tried? I mean, you got together as a whole bunch for the nation's yeah, we family did. reunion. Yes. Uh, we, we have pictures uh, of that, and it, it's just amazing to see the, the group of, <laughs> that group of people. Because each one had children? Yes. And grandchildren? Yes. You know, I just adored your mother, and she, I heard that at one of these reunions you asked her to sing when she was in her 90s, mm -hmm. and she says, I will, but I'm going to turn around backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She was shy. Yeah, she, she was very shy, and she never had an enemy in the world. It, oh, just so oh sweet. Lord, it, that could just be said of any one of us. Uh, Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah. Um, but she sang my home in Arkansas when she was 102 years old in the nursing home. Oh, she did? Yes, and she did a fantastic job. Um, 102. You know, it, it was... The, the nursing home was a wonderful, wonderful, safe place for her. Of mm -hmm. course, it was her son, yeah, Olin, who and built his, it. Yeah. 
And then his the grandson and granddaughter were managing it. Mm -hmm. It's been a story. So if you go into these places, you'll see their picture mm -hmm. as founding people. Mm -hmm. Olin and Mary Nations. Yeah. Remember them so well. But back to your early days, where beside, how, how long did you stay at Tiller? Oh, uh, stayed there while my dad was the head saw filer for the uh, Ted Scott Lumber Company, which was, I think, about four years. Saw filer. Of yeah. course you had to have a sharp saw to cut yeah. the forest. Do you remember big trees up in Douglas County? Huge trees. At that time, um, I remember a, an old pine tree. You know, normally pine trees, you know, are three or four feet through, but this one was was eight feet through oh. at, at the bottom. It was dead, but it was still standing. It was an awesome tree. Well, now, you kind of stayed close to Oregon a lot of your life, haven't yes. you? Yes. Uh, if I had not gone to the Army, I probably never would have left Oregon. Okay. But uh, Uncle Sam took me east uh, to Washington, D.C., and that's where I finished my uh, training for my voice okay. with... Uh, um, what is his name? I can't remember his name. Because the quartet was good beginnings, but... Yeah, I, I got into the solo work. And Marilyn Cotton and I did a lot of touring in Southern California after I got through with my training back she east. She was a, the, the singer for an evangelistic series. She, was a, she actually is still singing, and you can buy her records mm. on, online. Well, it... From music, you didn't just stay with gospel and little country songs that your mother liked to sing. Right. I bet you could sing that back home in. <laughs> right. <laughs> you moved into other kinds of music. Yeah, I, I just kind of walked through the doors that opened. And one time uh, the door opened for me to do some opera over mm -hmm. in Europe. And so I went over there and did opera. And that was fun, but it was not. It really was not me. It was not. So I went back to, uh, I came back here and started doing concerts and, and uh, weddings and funerals and churches and everything that uh, people asked me to do, I would do. Folks, I want to tell you about <clears throat> the last time I saw this fella was at the funeral of this little gal. Now this is back in the Milo days. And this is the way Lou and Bernie looked back then. And uh, at her funeral, she died uh, two years ago over in northern Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, he came and, and uh, sang, which would have pleased her greatly. Mm -hmm. She had a disease that were crippling. Yeah. An arthritis kind of thing that had her... And the gal in the middle is Pat Grayson, and she's from up in the Gladstone area, Oregon City, and I've lost track of her. So if any of the people watching this show know where Pat Grayson is, I'd love to see her. I'd love to get the word. Um, pictures about all kinds of that olden days. Who's this guy? <laughs> That's my brother Bob. Now, I want to see the... I recognize the girls there, too. Uh, well, that must have been up at our school, and this was the way graduation was done. I mean, a friend of ours, Carol Lingscheit, yeah, made this beautiful rose out of crepe paper and wire. And you can see it's the size of, oh, four or five wow, feet. yes, right. She was quite an artist and still is down in the Northern California area. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures of you because I haven't kept track of yeah, where you were from right. time to time. But I was on the go. You were on the go. <laughs> what took you over to Eastern Oregon? Uh, just to uh, relax. Life over there is lived at a much slower s pace than it is over here. Now, when you <clears throat> is there a town near you? Where you lived, out in the... You, you it's might, kind of sagebrushy, isn't you it? You might call it a... Well, it, actually, it's the it's an area where the best um, 
hay is grown in the entire state. Lots of water in the ground. Mm. And they pump that out and grow extremely beautiful crops. Uh, the town it has uh, about 200 people in it. And what's the name of your town? Christmas Valley. Oh, we <laughs> see it on the news with the uh -huh. weather in yeah. Christmas Valley is weather. below freezing, below zero. Yeah, below. right. <laughs> What's the story about your house? My house in over there, Christmas Valley. Yeah, I uh, it it is no more. Um, Why? Well, was it uh, fire? No, it was flood. Flood. Right now, you don't think of Eastern Oregon flooding, so no. tell me more. It, it was a an interior flood. I was gone in the winter time, and of course, you know when it dips down unexpectedly, uh, your pipes break if you're not well protected. Mm. I had the heat on, but uh, that was not enough. And uh, the pipes froze and flooded the house. I mean, completely flooded it. It, was, it. it completely destroyed everything. And when I got back, I couldn't even walk in the door because the mold was so strong. It had had a month to, you know, to pro grow. Yeah, to grow. <laughs> and so uh, it got into the walls and everything, you know. And I'm very sensitive to mold, so I just had a guy tear it down and haul it away for the materials that he could salvage out of it. That's life changing. It certainly is. And no wonder you have a home on wheels now. <laughs> right. Um, tell me, flashing back <clears throat> to your I career in music, because you've done a lot of different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if bluegrass is part of it. I've never heard you I've sing that. I've never done bluegrass. I love bluegrass. Well, let's, let's see about it. I, I just think that it might be fun <laughs> to redo that. Um, back to this trillium. It, the symbolism is enormous mm -hmm. about the three perfect petals mm -hmm. on the blossom. And we were there the year that we got to choose all these yes, things. You got to choose we did colors. That. The colors, the, the names. Yeah. Even it, the time of the reunions and all that. It's kind of fun to be at the yeah, beginnings. Right. Uh, you've done other things that really stand out in your mind as being you and your brother Bob joined up with Delmer Farley and somebody and Leonard else. Yost. Leonard Yost. Mm -hmm. If you get to see the Yosts, you remind them that they have been invited to sit in that chair and be my guest. Okay. But, um, yeah, you did a lot of touring. And then Max Mace came with his quartet. It's fun to figure out. Yeah. That's the way it was. Uh -huh. They came all the way from Idaho. To, I don't know if it was just to sing in the quartet or to see Lou. To, 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 to meet us. Uh, meet the court that they'd heard about us and we'd heard about them. Yeah. So they came down. And then they played basketball. Yes. Yeah. Um, Lou, had, Lou and Max had known one another. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we got acquainted with him. Uh, you know, he, he's now a mature fella. Oh, yeah. He's a senior like the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, right. Did you ever expect? No. <laughs> but with mom, a hundred and... 102 or uh -huh. what? Now, did she, for how many years did she have children? As many years as you can, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little bit beyond. Uh, my, Mike was, um, was born when I think she was 48 years old when he was born. Oh, that's more of the nations, the nation of me. What did you say they called you? United. The United Nations, <laughs> <Right>. okay. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. And, uh, you know, that you guys have spread out all over the country, mm -hmm. but uh, welcome back to Southern Oregon. Thank you. Um, what are some high points as you look back over your life? My kids, of course. Okay, how many? Four. Four kids. Uh, Marcy and I... Uh, adopted a little boy in Washington, D.C. At, at uh, she was working at the General Conference, and 
I had just been released from the Army. And one day her boss said, would you like to adopt a baby? And we had just discussed it a few nights before about adopting because we didn't think we could have any children. So uh, she, she gave us the number. We called, went and saw the baby, and decided right then and there. Well, we asked, what is his name? And they said, we've named it temporarily Jimmy. Oh, my. And she said, we'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we started uh, um, adoption proceedings immediately and uh, brought him back here to Oregon, and he's never left. And then, of course, we had three girls. Ah, so that w was a, a beginning of yep. a family. Mm -hmm. And they live in? in uh, all of them in Portland ah. area. Well, yeah. Better Life TV now goes to Portland, Vancouver, and goes s soon to San Francisco, which is wonderful. That's where my sister Sharon, you oh. remember Sharon? Yes. Lives in East Bay. and. No, it just seems impossible that Better Life can be seen online around the globe. Right. So if you have friends over in Afghanistan, be sure to <laughs> tell them. <laughs> I don't happen to have any there. <laughs> well, your military career, what were you doing? I, uh, I volunteered to be in the White Coat Project. Mm. Uh, so I could stay stateside. I was, I was married, and, and I heard about this great coach, vocal coach in Washington, D.C., and that's where it was. So I volunteered so that I could be home and take this training from this fantastic uh, vocal coach. Okay. Would you give me a, a history lesson on white coats? White coats was a, what we thought at the time was a, uh, a defensive medical, uh, you know, um, to protect the soldiers against uh, germ warfare and things like that. And they did testing on us so that they could be sure that they had whatever it took to counteract whatever the, uh, our enemies could throw at us. And uh, they, would, they would give us, say, tularemia, something like that, and you would get a bad case of the flu, and then they would give you a shot to counteract it, and you'd go on with your business. That's usually what happens. Sometimes things went wrong and people got sick a whole lot worse than they should have. And you? I did too. You got? <laughs> yeah, I was, at, I was at Walter Reed Army Hospital for three months. I was part of that time I was on the terminal ward. I really got sick. Do you, did they name it? What it no, it, no they, it was secret. I mean, you don't know why you were that no, sick? No, no. Um, you know, a buddy of mine here went into that program, Mar Mervyn Lewis. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, I know him. <clears throat> he's over in Eastern Oregon, and I'd sure like to get him sitting here because yeah. his little brother Delbert did the show, and we raved about it growing up. Um, and this would be in the 1940s when there were still outhouses in the town. Mm-hmm. And uh, theirs was one of them. Yeah. Just down the street a little ways. Uh, how has that impacted your life? So then Marcy and the baby were, is this while you, after the baby came yeah, into your it, family? Uh, no, it was, uh, I got sick before. Right. That. And, um, and so I was basically sick for the rest of the time I was in the Army. That happened in about December of 62, and then I was sick clear till I got out. Now, have you written up, or have they done research? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of it now. About you uh -huh. and your health problems. Mm -hmm. But it didn't hurt your voice? Nope. Actually, it, it didn't hurt my voice, but it, it slowed down my, my everything, you know so that my, the recordings, the records that I made back east, my vibrato was slow. Hmm. I was only 25 years old, but it was slow. And then it began to speed up as the years went on and until I had a fast vibrato. And the vibrato usually is an indication of your uh, strength and 
you know, stamina. So, so you probably, during that time, could hardly get around. It was very difficult. Yeah, I, I couldn't take but a few steps. From death's time. door to that. Yeah. And did you say other um, white coats had similar reactions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, some of them, as I understand, get, received placebos. Yeah, so they could, that's true. You could tell what was... All, all of us got sick uh, that was in the room because we were all there together and they, and they pumped in whatever it was into the room. They didn't just inject you. Ah. Those who got injections, some w was placebos and some were not. But for us, we, we had breathed it in. And then were you all in the same ward at Walter Reed? I mean, uh, were they... I'd, I'd never found out. I tried to. Uh, a buddy of mine, very close buddy of mine, worked in records. And I tried to get him to tell me, uh, but he wouldn't. He, Where the other guys went right. and how they are... Uh, comp, uh, they can't reveal, you know, what's in records. Well, uh, nowadays with people breaking into right. all kinds of records. <laughs> you want to brag a little bit about these kids of yours? Well, I guess I'm a typical father. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether I am or not, but I, I am so proud of the accomplishments of my children and, uh, and the beauty of the girls. My boy is, uh, he grew up from six pounds and four ounces, I believe is what he was, to uh, he's now right around 300 pounds. A big guy. <laughs> big guy. Uh, he was named after me, Jimmy. He was Jim. already named. He was already <laughs> named, so we didn't have to change. Uh, his last name at that time was Busey, so we changed that to Nations. Does he yeah. know about his family, or is this? Yes, he did. Uh, we we told him that he was adopted right up front. Uh, Marcia would would tell him at you know from time to time she would talk to him about the way we found him and adopted him and how special he was uh, how special he was and but he when he got up into the teenage years he said i would like to find my real parents my birth parents so we said sure and um, so we looked them up and he went back east and uh, found them had a good time with him but the father would not see him so he never got to see his father oh and his father, shortly after that, died. So. So his mother and father didn't no. weren't a couple. Like, no. no. More than that one time. Right. <laughs> um, the girls. Well, um, I was down doing concerts with Marilyn Cotton when Marcia announced, "I'm pregnant," <laughs> and it came such a shock. You know, because we didn't think we could have children. And so it was a, definitely a shock to her. It was a shock, surprise, and it was, uh, and it was awesome. Like at the Christmas. Same time. Right, oh. Christmas. And, but it changed, uh, it changed the concert tour. <laughs> because she started getting sick and she, and uh, uh, morning sickness and mm -hmm. all that. And she says, I would like to go stay with my mother. So I took her up to see her mother, and, and that changed my whole career, probably for the good. Now, where was her mother living? In Sacramento. Oh, better life is going to Sacramento. Good. And to San Francisco. And yeah. it's, it's really exciting to be part of this, to think that this is vis visible, uh -huh. being seen in Reno. Oh, it is? Yeah. So if you've got stories about Nevada, I'm I was asked to go down there and do a concert in Reno for the uh, orchestra down there. Oh. That would be fun, I think. Absolutely. Um, Jim, we are obviously past retirement age. Mm -hmm. So what's retirement look like for you? It, I don't consider retirement. Okay. I, I'm like my dad. He said, I'll never retire. And he didn't, and he lived to be 100. Okay, he lived to be 100, and, my and mother your mother 102, 102 mm -hmm. but there was a broad 
yeah, span I think there between was, the uh, two of them. Yeah, I 11, 12 years, something like that. Between them. Between them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't really know your dad, but once I got acquainted with your mother, I yeah. wanted all the stories I could learn. Yeah, right. I had two other girls. You named, you told us about the beginning of one daughter. Her name is? My, my daughter, mm -hmm. Susan. And then? Trisha. And then? Nancy. Nancy. And uh, uh, hello to you girls. I mm -hmm. <laughs> think they'll be watching you yeah, on television. Right. But somehow uh, you brought, after Europe, after all these other places, here you are back in s Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I met him in the grocery store. Would yeah. you believe it? That was fun. And he speaks up and calls my name. <laughs> Uh, I surprised you, didn't I? Absolutely <laughs> floored me. Yeah. Like, I, I, I just think, well, aren't we just so lucky to have made friends in our youth? Mm -hmm. And still, I guess we look, even with my funny little chemo curls, um, we still look. There was no trouble. I, I knew who you were instantly. <laughs> I knew it. It. it uh, uh, you were a little frustrated right there for a little bit in meeting and everything because you left your wallet in the oh, store. Oh, <laughs> don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, but I did fine. Uh, folks, it's too soon. It's over. Our yeah. filming is over. But thank How long you. did it last? 28 and a half minutes. Really? And, and thank <laughs> you so much oh, for being so my welcome. guest. My, my I'm privilege. Bernie Martin Beck, and I get to meet old-time friends who, like me, went to... Milo, and you know, wildflower season is so wonderful. I hope you folks have gone and looked carefully at spring and fall as the different flowers bloom. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, just saying thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs>